So do you want to know how to invest in your 20s in order to become wealthy in your 30s? Well, in today's video, I'm going to share eight different methods that will pretty much guarantee that you'll be able to generate a significant amount of wealth and generate passive income along the way. These strategies are ones which I personally follow, so let me share them with you. Starting off with step one, which is to start now. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking about investing. If not, you've probably started already. But what I will say is that the younger you are and the quicker that you can get started, the better. Here's why. There's an investment calculation called compounded growth, and this calculation shows you exactly how much that your money will grow over time. Now, interestingly enough, $1 invested at 20 years of age at a 7% rate of return would leave you with $21 by age 65. But if you invested that $1 at 30 years of age, again, with that 7% rate of return, you would have at age 65 just $10.68. The moral of this story being by just waiting 10 years to get started investing, could cost you half of your investment returns come retirement. So invest as early as you can because it will pay dividends later on in life. And I mean that figuratively, but also literally too. Now you might be thinking, well, $21 certainly isn't enough for me to retire on. And that's true because you'll probably barely be able to buy a pint in a pub for that price with these current levels of inflation if they persist for the next few years. So now let's talk about step number two, which is to be aggressive with your investments. And this is certainly easier said than done, but you should be definitely looking to invest at least 10% of your monthly income and ideally looking to invest upwards of 25% of your income if you really want to speed up your progress. Let me show you guys something. Let's say that we have two individuals, one who earns $40,000 per year post-tax and he invests 10% of his income, which is the equivalent to $333 per month. But let's say we also have another individual who also earns that same $40,000 per year. But that individual invests 25% of his income the equivalent to $833 per month. With those two examples, this is how much that you'd have within your investment portfolios at age 65. Just from one individual certainly being more aggressive than the other in terms of the amount of money that they're investing every single month, they'll generate more than double the returns simply down to the power of compounding. It's exactly the reason why Albert Einstein once said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it, and he who doesn't, pays it. Now, where exactly should you be looking to make those investments? You might be asking, well, for me personally, I use something called a stocks and shares ISA, which is a tax-free investment account if you're over here in the UK. The benefit of this account is, well, you owe diddly squat to the tax man when you decide to sell your investments, which is great because me, along with probably many of you guys out there, certainly don't like paying any more tax than you already have to. The only downside, I guess you could say, is that you can only invest up to £20,000 per tax year into a stocks and shares ISA. But unless you're doing extremely well for yourself, well, that's still a sizable amount of money that you can look to invest every single year, absolutely tax free. Now, I guess it's all well and good me quoting one of the smartest blokes on the planet about compound interest. But what if you don't have £40,000 per year in income, you can't afford to invest 25% of that income, and you also don't have the £20,000 a year in order to fill your tax-free ISA allowance. After all, we've got double-digit inflation rates and kind of investing that amount of money is becoming harder to do. But thankfully, if you are in that position, well, there are a few solutions for you. Starting off with step number three, which is that you are the investment. Now, when we're talking about our future wealth, we're always talking about it in monetary terms. It's kind of like how we can turn X into Y. But fundamentally, if you don't have the knowledge and the skill set, turning that X into Y might be a little bit more difficult than you think. And that's why it's also important when you're looking to increase your wealth over time, you also look to increase your knowledge. Knowledge. Because if you can grow your knowledge, you'll grow your bank account. And with a bigger bank account, you'll have more money to invest. Bearing in mind Warren Buffett, who is worth over $100 billion today, who made all of his money from making fantastic investments over the course of his investment lifetime, still very much maintains that the best investment that you can make is an investment in yourself. And he certainly practices what he preaches. Because Warren Buffett, aged just 19, brought the book called The Intelligent Investor. It's a book written by an individual called Benjamin Graham, who Buffett would go on to be taught by at Columbia University in 1951. Benjamin Graham became one of Buffett's early mentors and teachers within the investing space. He taught Buffett some of his core foundational investing principles in order to become that intelligent investor. And Buffett went on to share one of these in an interview back in 2010. He got me thinking 
not as a stock as something with a ticker symbol that wiggles around and that you know that you look at charts on or anything. He, he, he taught me to think about it as part of a business, and and that was vital. And he and he and he he taught me not to really pay any attention to stock market fluctuations except when they were working in my favor. So that. Not to get you know elated because something had gone up or depressed because it went down. So look, you can make an investment in yourself today by going on to purchase a book like The Intelligent Investor. It's a book that I've personally read cover to cover. It's a little bit of a heavy one, but I certainly recommend it. And for those of you guys who are interested, I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. Now, alternatively, the other solution that I wanted to discuss with you guys that will allow you to become more aggressive with your investments, as we discussed in step number two, is to actually talk about step number four, which is to increase your income streams. Now, the reason why I think this is an important point to call out is because the average millionaire has about seven streams of income, which kind of made me think, is it the total amount of income streams that makes you a millionaire? Or is it just that you have a couple of income streams that are high earning income streams that allow you to pretty much gain the rest of the income streams thereafter? And for me personally, I think it's certainly the latter, where if you simply focus on building one or two core income streams that are good income streams, then that will certainly allow you to facilitate building other income streams thereafter. Because what you don't want to do is spread yourself too thin and have your fingers in too many different pies. It's almost what I've kind of been able to achieve with this YouTube channel over the course of the past couple of years. Now, I'm certainly by no means a millionaire, but by having something like a YouTube channel, which is a high profit margin business, it's allowed me to increase my income quite substantially in comparison to what I'd be able to earn just during my normal nine to five job. So if we take a look at my own personal seven streams of income, we've got the earned income from the nine till five. We've got the ad revenue from YouTube. We've got affiliate revenue, sponsorship revenue, digital product revenue, interest income from savings and dividend income from my investments. So they are my seven income streams currently, many of which have simply come as a byproduct of having this YouTube channel. But hopefully by sharing my own personal streams of income with you guys, that'll give you some inspiration of where you could look to focus your time and attention in the future on building your own income streams too. Now, of course, having a full-blown business isn't for everybody, but for me personally, this YouTube channel is simply just a bit of a side hustle. It's something that I do in my spare time on top of my nine till five, and it certainly puts me in a position that allows me to invest more money pretty much every single month into my investment portfolio. Now, whilst it's important that I emphasize the point around increasing your income, it doesn't mean that you should increase your outgoings. So let's talk about step number five, which is to avoid lifestyle inflation. Have you ever heard of the term lifestyle creep? You may or may not have heard it before, but it's probably something that resonates. It's that moment where you work hard at your job and you go on to get a promotion and therefore a pay rise. However, with that pay rise and that extra surplus cash, you then go on to spend that cash on bigger and better and more expensive things and experiences. So in order to keep up with the current desires which you have, you work harder again, you get another promotion at work, you earn more money and then you go and buy more expensive things and experiences on top of that too. It's that endless cycle of earning more money but never becoming better off financially. It's probably the reason why the average savings levels in the UK right now are so concerningly low with over one third of individuals having less than £1,500 in savings. Some people will blame low wages, but you could equally put an argument forward that poor financial management certainly has to come in the equation too. Because it simply doesn't matter if on paper you're a high earner. Let's say you earn £100,000 per year, but if you're spending £100,000 per year, you're financially worse off than the individual earning 30 k a year who manages to save 10% of his or her income. So just because your income goes up doesn't mean that your lifestyle expenses should go up too. So resist the temptation for that fancy new car or whatever it is. Certainly a temptation that I've had to resist in the past couple of years, but I know my future self will thank me for it. Now, whilst we're talking about the principle of financial discipline, now let's move on to step number six, which is to reduce your bad debt. Now, not all debt is bad debt. You can actually use debt in a positive way in order to accumulate assets. In actual fact, it's why when you look at the balance sheets of big organizations like Apple, as an example, despite the fact that they made nearly $100 billion in earnings, they still have $129 billion in short term liabilities on their balance sheet. And that's because they use other people's money, i.e. the bank's money rather than their own money in order to facilitate the future growth within their business. And on a side note, those screenshots are from a free investing app called Simply Wall Street, which is a pretty cool app that I use to analyze stocks and essentially discover good investment opportunities 
So I'll leave a link to it down in the description below if it's something you're interested in. So using good debt is fine, but bad debt is certainly something that you're going to want to get rid of. Now when I say bad debt, what I mean by that is credit card debt, payday loans and perhaps even borrowing money in order to pay off other debt which you have. And it certainly feels like a common problem because as of 2021, UK consumers actually had a total debt level of £1.7 trillion, which is the equivalent to having unsecured debt levels per adult here in the UK of three and a half thousand quid. Now, there certainly are four main methods in order to clear bad debt. You've got the avalanche method, the snowball method, the balance transfer method, and the debt consolidation method. Now, I'm certainly not a debt advisor, but the avalanche method certainly seems like a sensible option. It's where you pay all the minimum balances on all of the debt that you have, but you actually look to focus on clearing the debt that actually has the highest rate of interest and once you've cleared the debt with the highest rate of interest you then move down to the next level of debt with the lower interest rate that you have and if you are struggling with debt well i'd certainly go back to step four and certainly look to increase your income then finally we're going to talk about the most scary step which is step number seven which is to take risks if you're in your 20s perhaps even going into your 30s you're still young so you can actually afford to take those risks because you've got time on your side in case they fail. Because the worst regret that you'll have in life is if you look back when you're 60 or 70 years of age and you didn't do the things that you wish you'd done today. Because you don't want to look back and wish that you'd started that e-commerce brand at 21, perhaps that YouTube channel at 25, perhaps the clothing brand at 31, or perhaps the car detailing company at 35. And look, you might also want to do all of those things. You might fail at the e-com brand, the YouTube channel, perhaps even the clothing brand, but you just need one of those things to take off. And it could be that one thing that goes on to surpass all of your expectations and generate you a huge amount of wealth along the way so whatever that thing is for you just make sure that you get started and i'm not saying be reckless and quit your job tomorrow and just start a business but what i'm saying is just take that chance on yourself and actually start whatever it is that you want to do do it in your spare time do it after work or before work and before you know it that part-time side hustle might just turn out being your full-time job so go and start that business go and start buying investment properties go and start buying stocks and building out an investment portfolio go and start learning new skills that you can look to increase your income and if you do all of these things in your 20s then you'll certainly be in a fantastic position by the time that you hit your 30s now if you're really unsure about where specifically you should be investing your money then you might want to check out this video next and with that being said i'll see you over in the next one